Today we're going to be talking about signals intelligence for the small unit. Specifically, one of the coolest products out there, Haney SA Ultra. So the Tiny SA Ultra is a spectrum analyzer that has really been a game changer. You've seen this thing fielded in Ukraine in a variety of different roles. I talk about its setup and use and how to implement this into the small unit in the Gorilla's Guide to Signals Intelligence. In this video, we're going to be talking about exactly how to set that up. First things first, what the heck is a spectrum analyzer and why do you want it? One of the cool things about this is it's going to show you everything that is transmitting within a given frequency range. Okay, so I can set the parameters essentially of my window that I'm looking at right here, and it's going to create a spike wherever it detects a frequency that's transmitting actively inside of that space. So, for example, I'm going to cut on a radio that we have over here. And normally you wouldn't want to do this in this close proximity, but hey, I'm willing to sacrifice my equipment <laughs> for the sake of science. All right, so we're going to go on and transmit. Oh man, you see that spike right there. Okay, so seeing that spike, we want to cut this off. You don't want to make a habit of doing that. It kind of creates feedback, yep. right? Desensitizes equipment a little bit. But you saw that spike there. All right. That's telling you that something is transmitting, in this case, obviously extreme close proximity, but in an outside working environment, you would be able to see what's transmitting within a given range, okay? So in addition to seeing that spike, you're also gonna be able to see what frequency that is up at the top. And down below at the bottom, you're gonna see its operating parameters. And in this case, this tiny SA is set up to monitor 136 to 174 megahertz, which just so happens to be the VHF transmitting range of your standard dial thing radio and pretty much all of your other handheld radios that are out there, okay? Specifically in VHF or very high frequency. But taking a look at this, some of the other neat things that this is able to do, you just tap the screen, this is a touch screen device. Let me turn this around so I can see what I'm doing here. We want to tap display. And I'm going to enable the waterfall. All right. Tap it twice. Makes the waterfall fairly large. There's a lot of neat settings that are in here. You can uh, create a trace, which is going to put little flags across all of the things that are transmitting in a given range so that you can see the uh, history or RF patterns of life. Again, talk about this heavily in the book. But I'm gonna be able to see here what is transmitting, and I'm gonna see a little uh, stream. We call it a waterfall, because as you can see, it's blue, right? Looks like a waterfall. Anybody that's familiar with SDR, or Software Defined Radios on computers, is gonna know the waterfall as well. It's the same thing. Let me go on and hit transmit again. All right. Heat it up for just a second. And you see that blip there, right? We're going to see that even though the spike went away, I still see that blip on the screen. That's going to tell me that something was there. And on the top, I have the water wheel here where I can rotate my flag back and forth and I can put it back on there. And it's going to tell me what frequency that was all right it's going to display it up at the top if i wanted to i can freeze the screen i can look at that and then i can compare that to other pieces of data that i had to see what the nature of that transmission is 
Of course, you can see that on the waterfall that is fairly wide, that would indicate that that is voice, and in particular, analog voice. So that's gonna tell me some things. Other types of data transmissions that are out there, especially handheld radios, uh, digital mobile radio, DMR, uh, DPMR is another one. LoRa mesh networking would be yet another one. These all have very specific signals, and I would be able to find out what those are based on this right here. And there's a database to see those different wavelengths, right? Yep. So uh, one of the resources that I go back to regularly is a website called SIGIDWiki.com, and they have their own software suite that you can download for free called Artemis. I'm a strong advocate of that. I donate money to SIGID Wiki because I'm a very firm believer in what they do. And uh, that's one that, that you can run on a dedicated laptop. I have a, uh, a Panasonic Toughbook mm -hmm. that I run Artemis on and it is a repository of those waterfall signatures along with audio clips that's gonna tell me what that is. Uh, the Tiny SA Ultra, has an audio jack where you have an audio output in my experience it's kind of kludgy to use doesn't work very well so with the tiny sa i use this as a situational awareness tool primarily to capture signals as they are transmitting and then use a dedicated communications receiver something like a malahite mm -hmm. dsp2 or if it is in the receiving range of a Baofeng radio or any other type of radio, then I'm gonna see what that audio output is and what it actually sounds like. So in short, the Tiny SA Ultra is a great tool to be able to see what is transmitting on the spectrum and then utilizing another tool, I'll be able to see what that audio output is. Now, one of the other things that you're gonna notice about this, Tiny SA Ultra will come with a standard, uh, like an old cordless phone antenna that you see right here. Um, those are kind of marginal at best. They're also pretty fragile, you can break these. I always upgrade that antenna to something that's more purpose built. What we're doing right now is utilizing this to monitor VHF frequencies that are primarily being transmitted from handheld radios. So I'm gonna be using an antenna that matches that. This is one of the gooseneck uh, flexible whip antennas that we have in the store. And of course it's a BNC base, so I have a BNC adapter on this. This is an SMA female uh, mounting point so that's the type of antenna adapter that you're gonna need. You can see that I have it right here. All right. Uh, I switch everything kind of as a, a personal thing with radios, whether they are for signals intelligence in the field or um, you know for transmitting in the field as well. I'm gonna be using BNC for everything. Why? Because it's easy on, easy off. Just like so. So if I wanted to upgrade to an antenna that I built, put up into a tree, maybe all of a sudden I'm gonna uh, repurpose this for trying to detect drones, which is you know up in the uh, 2.4 to 5.8 gigahertz range. And you can easily do that with this as well. Maybe I'm switching to um, a, uh, a Yagi antenna for radio direction finding. I can pull this off, just put another one on there. Very versatile piece of equipment, something that I'm always carrying in a go bag. This is something that I always have on me and uh, a tool that you can use for a variety of purposes, including, by the way, I get a lot of questions about this from private investigators. Uh, can you use this to detect bugs? You absolutely can. Uh, so if you think that you're being targeted with uh, listening devices, technical surveillance devices, this is a tool if you know what frequency that they're transmitting on. And those are usually published data, by the way. Uh, Seek ID Wiki has that as well. This is a device that you could use uh, with an uh, antenna that has some loss to it, like this uh, short stubby here. You'd be able to locate those. 
I think one of the things too is how much modular ability that these have and the different presets that you can set for them. So one of the presets on this one is specifically for you and VHF with a divider in the middle. Mm -hmm. It gives you a little bit more of a uh, more of an idea. So that one's specifically set for anything the Baofeng uh, 152 can see and intercept. Right. So, you know, if I know in my working environment that the people that I'm trying to monitor or, uh, you know, target, exploit, so on and so forth, uh, I know that their baseline piece of equipment transmits in a given transmitter range, I'm going to set this device to monitor those ranges and I can see a real time picture of that. Um, you know, in Afghanistan, the SIGINT guys, uh, whether they were working uh, as the STAG operators or LLVI, low level voice intercept, or um, the uh, SOD A's, the Special Operations Team Alpha guys, you know, a lot of times they would be using a pan adapter, which was a basically a much larger, far less portable version of this, and a substantially more expensive version of this as well. And uh, when these started coming to market, it was definitely a game changer. Uh, if you check out the Brushbeater GitHub page, there is a couple of downloads up there that are specific to Tiny SA Ultra, and they were published in Ukraine. Uh, so there's a number of open source intelligence outlets that have uh, that are working in Ukraine that are making very strong use of these and have been pushing out information on that. So the TTPs that they're using for counter drone use, as well as targeting Russian units on the ground, is all covered in those manuals. And I speak to that specifically, and uh, wrote this book, The Gorilla's Guide to Signals Intelligence, in part for that utility specifically. I think as a closing note, Tiny Six is an amazing handheld device. One of its uh, one of the, I'd say, cons is it is a touch screen, so it does lend itself to breaking, especially in field use. You drop that thing on gravel, or you bang up against something too hard just with the raw unit, and you're likely to damage it. But uh, Vigilant Engineering came out with a case for it. It's got a protective plexiglass front case, uh, really robust housing. So, yeah. you know, dropping that is going to be a lot easier on the unit than, you know, not having it. Vigilante engineering case here is something that we stock in the store, and I am naturally a huge fan of that because the reality is these pieces of equipment really weren't designed for hard use in the field, but the fact that we have friends that are heavily involved in the 3D printing and manufacturing business, we can make something much more rugged. Uh, which is exactly what we've done. It's a big shout out to Vigilante Engineering. And of course, you can find these products over at Brushbeater.store. Store. Guys, I hope that this has been informative. This is a heck of a tool to have in your toolbox and has quickly become my go-to signals intelligence tool in the field. Hit that like and subscribe button down below. Leave us a comment. We look forward to hearing from all of you. This is, uh, NC Scout with Brush Feeder Store. We'll talk to you again very soon.